Hi everyone, LazyFire here. Welcome back to the Hate the Player podcast. We're doing alternating uh, guest host weeks, I guess. I don't know. Uh, guests week? Yeah, I don't know. You guys are, you and Three Toes, Arnold, are uh, yeah, we're, generally we're tag team co right now. Yeah, you're, every other week I'm going to have a new person. Uh, of course, I recorded two episodes with you, but not with Three Toes. Uh, one of those episodes never came out because I accidentally deleted all files related to it when I was worried my... Uh, my storage capacity on my terabyte hard drive was getting too low oh. at 30, 300 gigs. I was like, oh no, I had a crisis, and I just deleted like every video and audio thing I had that I didn't need at the moment. So what uh, What episode did we lose, 54? 56. 56, so last week's. Uh-huh. Uh, the week before last, yeah. Oh, okay. The, one, the last one you and I recorded, and then Three Toes and I recorded Makeup 56 last week. Uh. So you can see... Uh, it was fine because it was really just a continuation of the week before where I was trashing people who play on PCs exclusively and can't understand the idea of maybe other people also deserve games sometimes. Hmm. But, you know, I have words about that this week that are that will make the PC Master Race happy. Um, but how have you been doing? What have you been up to? Uh, life's, life's been good, man. Um, as far as video games, I've been, uh, been playing a fair amount of... Uh, Batman Arkham Origins. Uh, that was one of the one of the single player games that I uh, I had uh, picked up, and you know, like most games, you play it for a minute and then you move on to the next thing because Steam sale. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I actually have uh, been playing, and I think I'm like 16 hours in, and I really like the Batman games. And this is a uh, this is the, easily the worst of uh, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and this is Arkham Origins, yeah. and it's easily not as good as the first two, but it's still really good. Because yeah, I was the first two were like on a one to ten scale, probably an eight point five. This one's an eight, seven point five. Yeah. It's still really good. Yeah, I was watching somebody play uh, Arkham Origins. I really need to go catch up with that because I finally caught up on a Devil May Cry LP I was watching, um, but. I have to go find that again and uh, start watching it because he was pointing out all the little things that the game did that were kind of weird and like didn't make any sense and you know bad ideas. There's a part where you have to go back to the boat where you fought uh, the uh, the penguin boat, right? And all the guards there are just standing stone still and looking in one direction. Yep. Yeah, that's not supposed to be like that. They're supposed to be, you know, moving around, patrolling. Uh, they moved guarding. around for me, but what was weird uh, is when I went back, it was an entirely different bad guys guys that were on the boat. <laughs> yeah, like it, I mean, the whole like oh Batman Origins, nobody knows who Batman is thing. Mm. It's not handled well at all. Like because, <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna do Origins, you need to make it about the real beginning. Like okay, so. Yeah. Like, nobody knows I'm Batman, but I have all Batman stuff, and I have this fucking awesome bat wing, and, you know, fly around and shit, but, like, so, where the fuck did all this shit come from, you know? And yeah. why the fuck don't they know who I am, you know? It's just, like, that. the only thing that's origins about it is that, oh, hey, all these people don't know who Batman is. Oh, you don't know who the Joker is. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, it, it. It's hollow. It's hollow. Yeah, the yeah. story is is easily the weakest, but the game, but it's one of the one of these games that gets saved by really good gameplay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and the combat in it is just it's really polished. It's really good. It's really fair. I mean, if you hmm. fuck up, it's because you fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a huge thing that's been coming up. I, I think I mentioned this in the uh, the Shadow of Mortar LP I'm doing. But it feels like games that are designed around the Batman combat system, um, they're a bit easier in terms of combat. Like, if you were trying to do that combat, uh, that many enemies on screen at once, and you were trying to do it in, like, a Devil May Cry game, or with a lot of the other games I can think of, oh, man, I'm suddenly losing it. Like, I've played some, uh, you know, th where the enemies have tells that mm -hmm. are not things flashing over their heads, but, like, actions and everything. Right. If you tried to do that with... and without a reversal system... Uh, Ninja Gaiden is a good example of that. Like, the enemies had tells that they were going to do something, and you could punish them for attacking you, and they could do the same to you. 
Uh, God Hand's another good one. But you only maybe have like three or four enemies you're fighting at once, if not just one or two. Uh, so it was a little bit more manageable. But if you're going to throw that many enemies at somebody at once, you need to have something that single uh, singles the signals to them that, hey, you're about to get swung at. You better do something about it. Right. Um, so I can, it just feels, though, at the end of the day, like it's at a point making it kind of simplified for you to do really cool stuff without needing to have a ton of skill to do it. Well, I think it goes back to the uh, the argument that, that we brought up a bunch of times, uh, fun versus uh, re- realism. And, oh, of course. And it adds, it makes it fun because you can take on, it's challenging. You can take on, like I'm playing on hard, The the you don't have long to react. It's almost, yeah. it's almost, I, and I, I hate using this comparison because it's way more fun than it sounds. It's almost like a quick time game, mm-hmm. but I mean, you, you're in control of like of what you're of what you're doing, and you you have multiple options. You like if you see oh if somebody's about to hit me, well it's not oh mash Y. You can do that, or mm-hmm. you can try to hit him first, or you can try to jump out. I mean, you have a bunch of options. But yeah. But I mean, and I that that really isn't a fair comparison to make because it's way more fun than just oh mash Y, you know? Yeah, yeah. And there are the thing I found in Arkham, uh, or not Arkham, Jesus, in Shadow of Mordor is that uh, the certain enemies will punish you a lot more for not paying really close attention. Like if a guy has a shield in uh, in Batman, the Batman games, mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to see that and the stun rods and all that other stuff, it's pretty easy to call them out. Right. Uh, but there's an enemy in uh, Shadow of Mortar called the Berserker who looks pretty close, not exactly, but close enough if you're not paying attention. And with how that game decides who you're going to swing at sometimes, uh, you might end up hitting him by mistake. But he, it serves the same purpose as the stun gun guys. If you try to attack him from the front, he'll simply just knock you back. He'll do a reversal on you. Hmm. Um which is interesting. Of course, if you do a finisher on him, he'll just die. But this, the point remains, like, you have to jump over him or if you have to stun him before you can hit him at all. Uh, I really like having that sort of guy in the mix in the combat. I just think that there's a... Uh, and they do make it interesting. I think throwing more of those guys at you in those that type of game is really the way to go. Um, but it, it feels like... There has to be a balance, though. You can have as many bog standard enemies as you want. You know, your your average guy is going, your average fighter in those games is going to be no problem to most players after a point. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you start throwing in shield and you know gun guys like immediately, people are going to have a hard time acclimating. It, like hitting that right balance in most fights is really difficult in those games. I feel like. Yeah. No. I I, I completely agree. And that's that's one of the things going back to the gameplay. It, it really it it's solid. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm tr- I'm just trying to think of a think of a way to way to properly explain it. it because you've got a variety of uh, common enemies, and then you've got guys that you, like bigger guys that you have to do different stuff to. And it's really it's kind of like juggling. You have yeah. to make sure you're in a spot. To where you can take out the weak guys without getting laid laid on by one of the big guys. Um, sometimes you you uh, you have to make sure that the next person you attack is somebody that you can attack to maintain like your flow meter, because once you hit a certain thing, like you can attack faster, you can react faster. It's uh, and you can do finishers and things like that. And it, it's it's I really 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 enjoy the combat system. Right. So it yeah. I think that's one of the really strong points in those games is the combat works really well. And it's one of those things that a lot of people can simply pick up and play to a point. Right. Uh, so it's not a... Like, I I know I'm disparaging it in a way, saying, hey, it's a little bit easier than maybe it needs to be or as games were before. But at the same time, if you are more accessible to more people, that's generally a sign of... You know, a lot of people would say, like, well, Dark Souls, blah, 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 right. it's a really good game. Uh, but the combat in in those games, to some people, is absolutely really fucking slow-paced. pain. It doesn't, yeah, it's not just slow pace. It's like, there are points where it doesn't, people don't understand, like, well, I was able to parry all those little guys, why can't I parry the boss? And 
It's like, well, no, it's a completely different thing. Well, why is it a different thing? You know, mm-hmm. it, it, they're not going to make Dark Souls. They're going to make a Batman game. They're going to make, you know, a, a successor to the Ninja Gaiden uh, series kind of thing. That's a little bit more, uh, I wouldn't say complex, but more accessible. Yeah. With a more complex overworld. Uh, I think that's probably the way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, another another thing I really like about it is I'm I'm uh I'm getting almost 60 frames a second at like even with 20 something guys on the screen running 1440, it's a yeah. really good engine. Uh, mm-hmm. I really like the art style. Um, that is that, an Unreal game. Yeah, I know. It, it, okay. For an Unreal game, it's it looks really good. Mm. Um, and and the animations are polished. They're really yeah. really good. Like, it's one of these games, that, like I said, the story is weak, but it, it has everything else so solid that it doesn't really matter. Right. So, have you played anything that wasn't a DayZ derivative? Uh, no, no, I've been rolling around shooting people, getting people angry. Uh, my dog and my cat have followed me in this room. I'm sorry if you hear <laughs> I, random hair flopping. And, yeah. yeah, that's my dog shaking her head because the cat has chased her up here. The cat is uh, in heat and is meowing and rubbing against everything, which oh. means she tries to ride my dog. Oh, well, I mean, that's just courteous. Uh-huh. So, anyways. But, um, no, rolling around, shooting people, and occasionally I'll use the uh, the Arnold voice. And, um, mm. and sometimes, my favorite thing to do right now is to kill someone and then sing taps to them in local, or in local <laughs> dad, like... <laughs> Uh, that's like, great. Because they have 40 seconds until they, they can respawn, so they mm-hmm. have to listen to me for 40 seconds. <laughs> oh, that's a great They move. either really love it or they get really angry, and either way I'm happy, which is Good. ultimately what matters. That is what matters. At the end of the day, as long as you're happy, that's the important thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, speaking of angering people, last night uh, uh, CQC and I jumped into some Counter-Strike games. Mm-hmm. We were unable, and this really pissed me off, uh, for whatever reason, he was not able to string together the ten wins to get ranked until I started playing with him a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and he's been playing for years and years. He ended up jumping into uh, some sort of master rank. He got into gold, and I've been in silver. Mm-hmm. And so he and I can't play in uh, competitive anymore until I rank up. Really? Yeah, they won't they say the gulf is too wide, and unless you bring a five-person team, uh, you will not be able to play with this person. Right, so I'm silver five, or I'm silver expert, or whatever the hell it is. So I'm probably a few wins away from, uh, and a few more good games away from uh, jumping into the next rank, and probably be close enough to play with them. Yeah, I probably, I think I actually took Counter-Strike uh, Go off. You know, it... <sighs> Uh, we've we've had this talk before. Yeah, we've had the talk. So I don't know. I'm having fun with it, but uh, the point was last night, CQC got Vac going on his mic, and uh, every time he died, he'd get. We're in uh, casual, so there were you know twenty people in the chat at once at points. And Tell he me, he was just, playing Lou Reed's. No, he was blasting Jesus. Yes. Oh my god, it was ridiculous. So every t- it, he there's this one guy who would hear him like when the beat dropped or something like that, the guy would like thank you and then it'd come back. He's like, "Oh, you got to be kidding." So CQC heard this and started like purposefully stopping the song. And the guy's like, "Oh my god, thanks so much. He's fucking done." And then just starting it back as soon as the guy <laughs> reacted. And it, it took like it took like six or seven instances of this before the guy realized what was happening. <laughs> I, was, I was just sitting there laughing my ass off at it. Uh, it was oh, great. God. Yeah, he, he runs a virtual audio cable, which yeah. is actually fairly complex. But mm-hmm. uh, it, it's definitely something I need to look into doing because I need to get every great 80s song uh, just queued up. Like the final countdown for when I'm like chasing somebody with a hatchet or something. All you really, really need is "You've Got the Touch" by Stan Bush. (laughs) 
I mean, once you have that going, you're pretty much set in terms of any song you might need ever. That's a good one. Um, yeah, that would be pretty great. If you could do uh, some songs from Far Cry Blood Dragon when you're chasing yes. somebody down, that's a good option. Uh, oh, actually, that reminds me. Have you ever heard of uh, this movie called The Miami Connection? No. So... There's a song in Far Cry Blood Dragon that was, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, I should say, that was straight up from this movie called The Miami Connection, hmm. which was this, like, crap, like, so bad it's terrible 80s movie that uh, was just, like, the most 80s movie ever. They were in Miami, there was drug dealers and uh, ninjas and stuff, I don't know. And uh, the MST3K guys are doing a live riff tracks thing of uh, Miami Connection, and I'm probably going to get a crew together to go see that up here. It's going to be fun times. Hmm. It's not until October, so I have time to plan this. It's more time than I had to plan my wedding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you got to make it better than your wedding, logically. I mean, shouldn't, well, as long as it doesn't hail, yeah, we should be okay. <laughs> Outdoor wedding, hailed. During my outdoor wedding, had to do it inside. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it didn't. It didn't hail during mine. Mine, mine was. Uh, mine was in Las Vegas. Yeah, Good difficult time. to do that. Good time. Okay, I'm gonna say something kind of insulting to you now. No, by all means, please. The two people I know who have had Vegas weddings have both had their marriages uh, end in divorce now. I, uh, yeah, did I did I tell you I've actually uh, filed the papers now and. Uh... And I, I should didn't know. I should. I thought you had done that years ago. No, <laughs> like a year no, ago. no, no. I, I'm still technically legally married. So well, you're a dirty cheater. That, that, yeah, that should be uh, that should be changing. Hopefully, maybe in the next. Uh, well, I should be get. She got the papers notarized, so I'll file probably next week. This is how, and I don't like the imagery I'm invoking here, <laughs> as my wife comes up the stairs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But that that entire process is basically how I envision if we were ever to get divorced, it would be. It would just be like we would forget to do it for that long, and it would just be like for years and years and years. Is like, are you, are you getting divorced? Yeah, we we should have. Dude, there's just you like to, there's just it's so, so too much, many paper. It's too much paperwork. We're not going to do that. Yeah, there's, yeah, exactly. It's it's so much easier to get married than it is to get divorced. Yeah, and it's near. It's near impossible to not have a child, so, I mean, think about this process. Yeah, right? No, and but I mean... It's near impossible to undo that. Dude, I can't, I can't imagine how people who have, like, bad divorces deal with it, because mm. my good divorce is a pain... Is, is, it's just annoying. Everything about the process is just fucking annoying. Yeah, that's why you don't... This is why people don't get divorced. It's not for the kids or anything. It's so they don't have to go through this yeah, That's work. exactly, yep. Yep, clearly. I have to stop next every time I every time we go to a wedding and we see something that is like it was smarter done than our wedding we go I look to my wife and I go next time we get married we have to do that and every time she just looks at me it's like what the fuck are you talking about next time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oops uh so have you been doing uh anything looking at anything else anything catch your eye uh E3 is uh beginning and and or begins at the end of next week with the first ever PC gamer uh, showcase. Really? Yeah, they're a PC gamer uh, book time on Friday of E3. Shit. Uh, and Microsoft is going to be at that event to uh, talk about their Xbox platform. That's how I feel about that. Um, not it's not just the Xbox One though that is going to play front and center and probably the Connect for PC and Windows 10 stuff, but they want to talk about how there's this thing now they're going to introduce it where you can stream your Xbox One games to your PC and like play as a stream like on Live did hmm. uh, before they filed for bankruptcy a couple weeks ago <laughs> and yeah so it's a good plan. Uh, <clears throat> so sorry my voice is really creaky today uh so the plan there is, is they're probably going to come in and start talking incessantly about how awesome xbox is. it's like every e3 presentation microsoft does 
where they talk about the exact opposite thing that you want to hear. What you want to hear is Microsoft goes, and we're going to bring Halo to the PC, and we're going to bring Crackdown to the PC, and we're going to bring all the, you know, oh, man. all Crackdown the rare franchise. So yeah, Crackdown 3, PC exclusive. You know, you want, you expect to hear them talking about their console exclusive, or their console games coming to the PC. Because one of the things they have is Halo, the other is Gears of War, and uh, if anyone cared about Crackdown, it would still be Crackdown. But they've released two games by two different studios at this point for that title, and uh, no one really played much of the second. Well, yeah, because uh, it wasn't as good as the first. And the first was so bare bones until the Keys of the City mode came out. Mm-hmm. That was great. That was a great mode because all you could it's just like, I want to have this gun that pins people to cars, and then I'm going to throw this car over a building at an uh, airplane. Right. Like, you know, there's all this crazy shit that's happening. And I can't believe uh, they haven't done that again. You know, like I feel like Saint, Saints Row uh, Four is the closest to it, but yeah, I mean, no, yeah. nothing's really touched on that again. No, and it's probably like the. There is a very distinct lack of direction in the Crackdown games. Mm -hmm. It was, go kill this person, go kill this person. Also, grab all these orbs. Remember, skills equal kills. Uh, Agent, skills equal kills. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And uh, I feel like people just looked at that after a time and said, okay, that's, that's great. Like, I know that I played Crackdown probably way more hours than I should have. And... (laughs) <laughs> one of the most entertaining things I could do in that entire game, kid you not, was jump as high as I could and try to land on somebody's head, because it would just knock them aside. They just like they'd fall down, and it was hilarious to watch the ragdoll. That was like that, and throwing cars at people was always entertaining. Definitely throw a car at somebody and shoot the gas gas tank as it fell. But I, that that really does fall into the Halo design philosophy. I don't know if you've ever seen or heard the uh, the design philosophy of, you know, you have these little 15 to 20 second really fun things you can do in a game, and you just string those together to make a really good game. And that's kind of what Crackdown did. It was like, all right, I can throw a car at a guy. Perfect. I can fight a bunch of people, too. I can jump on this thing. I can climb that. And it's like, okay, you get 15 to 20 seconds of that, and then you go to the next one. But without a story, without something moving you forward, without new areas to really explore after a time, it just becomes monotonous. You know, that's why the Batman series works a little bit better. It does a lot of the same stuff when you think about it. You know, you're, but the combat's a little bit more focused and realized instead of hitting a button to kick a guy if you're running or punch him if you're standing still. Uh, you know, it's, but you're, you know, cruising around a city, getting into fights, cruise to the next area, get into another fight, collect this thing, go over here, maybe get some story, fight this guy, fight that guy, fight this group of people. You know, it's, it's really, uh, just the same couple of things over and over but in different formats Mm. and Crackdown didn't it just felt like they didn't flip that format up enough to make it justified after a time I get that though kicking a car while it was driving at you was always pretty funny definitely yeah definitely got yeah I forgot about a lot of that stuff yeah um so have you been uh, looking at I know I asked you already but anything else that's caught your eye um, I'm probably gonna look at The Witcher Three because I've heard a ton of a uh, ton of good stuff about it. And... Whoa. Whoa! Yep, it's a dog. I don't know. Yep, that is my beagle dog. Think your think your dog just got penetrated? I I don't even know what she did. That the cat was like playing with her face for a good six minutes, and the dog was just not having it. I think she just did that to get the cat away. Hmm. Um, that's uh, why I close this door most of the time. So I've uh, I've also been looking at um, Far Cry 4, which I'm late late to the game on, but uh, jeez, again with the floppy ears. Looks yeah, uh, it, looks amazing. I'm I'm basically looking for uh, a single player type game to get into. Now mm-hmm. that I'm at the probably halfway point for Batman, which means I'm not going to finish it. Yep. Yeah. The the abandoned state of the game. Yep. It's like okay, I've seen everything I care about. And the story's getting stupider. I don't care anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I get that. What was it I was playing the other day? It just... There was a point where I was playing this game, and I think I was actually uh, one of the Witcher... It was probably Witcher 2, where it felt like I was at a point in the game where I was not going to get... It was the diminishing returns point, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really want... I know what's going to happen next. I don't really want to go do it. It seems like it's pointless. I feel like this is over. 
And I always worry about that in those games that are really large or have these really big obvious plot points coming that I'm just going to look at it and go, I don't want to do it anymore. I, I just don't. It's fine. I, I'm okay with the experience I've had up to this point. Turning it off right now would not be a loss for anybody. I don't know if that's what you kind of feel towards those games or what. But. No, no I, or, yeah, actually, I mean, pretty much exactly that. To di- to, I mean, differing degrees based on the game, but mm. it's like uh, you just kind of get like fatigued, I guess, if it's repetitive yeah. with like no uh, with no real differentiation between right, diff- uh, right. The, with no know, what... with no uh, hope of it really changing. Right. And I think that's... People have tried to do that with games. And I think that's always an interesting thing because a lot of times it becomes a uh, a moment in a game where people start going, this sucks now. Uh, think the Flood and the Halo games. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, yeah. everyone goes... Boring as shit. If you kept fighting Covenant for the rest of the game, would you have been happy? Or would you have rather had something like the Flood that changes the, the design of the game up? Personally, I think the Flood fucking sucked. Uh, Agreed. And their appearance in any of the Halo games was generally a travesty. Yeah. So, yeah, it was basically StarCraft, you know? You had you had the Terrans, you had the Protoss, and you had the Zerg. Mm-hmm. Except the Zerg were really bland and boring in this. Yeah. I mean, like, when, with any sort of quote-unquote zombie-type thing, and, I mean, they infect things, they... Like it's basically a zombie thing. Uh-huh. Um, there's there's so much there's so much great story you can have. You know? Yeah. You can do a lot with that, and they just basically said, Okay, now you fight these guys too. Mm-hmm. Here's a bunch of backstory in the world, but it doesn't really matter for this. I mean, Halo's one of those games that I really like the first one. I like the second one, not as much. Um I like the third one. I mean, I'm basically playing them on inertia. It's it's the yeah. like I I don't have an Xbox anymore, so I don't know mm-hmm. how I'm going to play the inevitable Halo Five. But, Guardians. But I'll, you know, I'll uh, I'll probably I'll find a way. You know, like <laughs> I, I I never had a PlayStation, but I still played all the Metal Gear games. So yeah, just there's a way. Just wait. It'll come out for the PC. <laughs> probably. All almost all of the Microsoft exclusive like Xbox One games have come out for the PC. The only one that has not is that uh, Sunset Overdrive game, like Dead Rising Three and uh, what was it? Rise, Son of Rome. So basically, if it's got Rise in the name, if, Rise of the Tomb Raider. If you want to talk uh, about is, a game that's uh, really disappointing, we'll talk about Dead Rising Three because really, do you play it? I've I've watched it, and it's just they just it, it's I'm trying I'm looking for the right word. It's just so samey and boring, and it's and it's just not cool. Like like I was I loved Dead Rising the the first one, uh-huh. um because when I I was probably I think I was freshman in college when that when that came out maybe. It was a launch title for the 360. Yeah, it was freshman in college. Yeah. Uh-huh. And ever since I was a little kid, I'm, I, I always thought, like, it's really boring just fighting one or two things. Why don't we have a ton of things, like like a whole, like 500 zombies, and then Dead Rising came out, and I'm like, oh my god, there's like 500 zombies on the screen. Even so though it was like, you're saying that the Xbox 360 was basically made for you because that was their argument with all of their launch games that they did, was <laughs> look at how many things we can put on screen at once. Right. Right, but uh, but I mean, Dead Rising had this weird kind of Japanesey, um, not kind of, very Japanesey feel to it, but not the yep. creepy sort of Japanese. The like, oh hey, we're wacky, and these are wacky. They're, like, I really like the stereotypical Japanese idea of what an American is. Yeah, and that's how that whole game plays. Or the fact that the uh, reason that uh, the zombies existed was because the U.S. was trying to find a way to get cheap beef. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. it was good. It was campy. It was like the equivalent of like an '80s movie, and it was good. Uh, Dead Rising Two, still, still all right. Little bland. I can't put my finger on it. It just wasn't as good. Yeah. And then, uh, 
then the third one is just like, why the fuck do I even care? Yeah, I heard a lot of people have said that it wasn't really well crafted. It, it felt like it was more um, uh, more requirement than something they wanted to do, which is actually kind of true because Microsoft gave Capcom a ton of money to make Dead Rising three uh, for the Xbox One, which is why it was an exclusive mm. until the PC version came out and ran even worse than the version that was on the Xbox One, uh. but. Because porting games is difficult, especially if it's a DirectX system to a DirectX system. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've i heard that, and then you have other games like Rise, Son of Rome, which was basically a Batman game, but uh, a little bit Roman-themed that in an era... See, I didn't if you play actually, that. If you actually knew anything about Roman history, you would look at what just happened in this game and go, what the fuck did this... You know, that's... You're just, like, yelling at it, and you realize, oh, Crytek made this. They don't know anything. <laughs> Perfect. Like, you're defending Nero. Dude. At the start of the game, your character is defending Nero, and there are barbarians sacking Rome. What? And anyone who knows anything about this is like, but that didn't happen ever in Nero's time. Yep. It wouldn't happen for another, like, mm-hmm. 200 years. Yep. The hell is this crap? Yep. But what I, what I didn't like... Or, well, I mean... I don't understand how you can make a bad Roman themed game. Because Shadow of the Coliseum. Right. I mean it because was terrible. Be, it's such a cool period in time. And there are so many awesome themes that you, you can explore. Uh, show that did it great. Uh, Rome. It's called Rome. It was on HBO, it's only like like uh, two seasons. But it, it was good. It was good. It had one of my favorite uh, bromances in that I've ever seen. Uh, between okay. the 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 uh, he was a legionnaire, the legionnaire, two legionnaires, and one was a fuck up, and the other was like the officer commanding a bunch of fuck ups, and and it 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 managed to it was <sighs> okay. Anyway, yeah. So there's but a, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a well, it's a um, it's a rich period in time with ton of awesome shit and really terrible shit that you can use for great stories. Yeah, exactly. Like, there really should have just been an Assassin's Creed Rome at this point. Yeah! Uh, though that would probably be treading back into the Assassin's Creed 2 uh, trilogy of games. Because <laughs> there were actually four games that were Assassin's Creed 2 brand. Um, that would actually be before <laughs> Assassin's Creed yeah. 1. So You could go see the towns when they were smaller. Right. Uh, before the Catholicism. Anyways, um, so... I'm going to give you a heads up. I played something this week that you may or may not be interested in. It's called Dirty Bomb. It is by the guys who made uh, Brink and Enemy Territory. Okay, so one of those games is great and one of those games is shit. One of those games was a decade ago. The other one's only five years ago. Right. And uh, I got to say, I had some fun with it. I didn't quite understand what the maps were, what things were happening in it. Uh, But the basic idea is that, similar to Brink, you have the series of objectives on the map. You go plant the objectives, you go fix things. It's only two instead of, like, 30 that were in Brink. Uh, They scrubbed out the free running, though you can still do a couple wall jumps. And uh, you have these... It's a free-to-play game, so you have these cards that you can use instead of... uh, You know, you can buy a character. If you buy a character with the in-game currency, which is $50,000 per card... um, you keep that card, but your loadouts are tied to these cards mm-hmm. that you have to buy. You can also spend ten real world dollars on that, which is just too much. Uh, and it's interesting. It's a fun game. They give you uh, instead of grenades or anything like that, Q and E do your special abilities. Each mm-hmm. cla- each person has two, and uh, one of them's like for one guy, it's an airstrike with the Q button, and then the E button is uh, throw down an ammo pack. And uh, the airstrike's actually pretty neat. Airstrikes and uh, lasers from space are a big thing in that game. They're kind of fun. And if Is you it have third to... person, first person? First person. Hmm. And uh, it plays, I would say, like a hyperkinetic Call of Duty game. Hmm. Like, very fast-paced. Uh, the melee is not a one-hit kill, but it's damn close, depending on the certain things. Uh, the best melee weapon in the game is a cricket bat. What? Yeah. 
<laughs> like most characters have a knife, there's one character that has a cricket bat, and apparently that thing is nuts. Hmm. Um, but it's it's like every one of your characters is a, a different class or a different uh, set of abilities. So you're there is a there is a character named Nader who uh, fires grenades. That is their entire thing. Hmm. You know, there's a there's a character called Aura who throws down healing stands. And what's her second ability? Oh, defib. She can get people up faster. Because when you get knocked down in that game, when you get shot enough to uh, die, you don't immediately die. You actually writhe around on the ground, and if you're far enough back, your teammates can pick you up, or the enemy can just shoot you or stab you until you're dead. Hmm. You can also hit a button to kill yourself, uh, which is K. So very uh, Gears of War. Yeah, in a way. Uh, it's Brink had that too in some places, in some ways. Um... But yeah, it's interesting. You go and you fix up this thing. They it cruises down to where it has to go, and then you switch sides, and the entire objective is then okay. One team takes the defender. One team takes the attacker side. Hmm. The game either finishes with them not completing it, or you know not completing the objective, or they complete the objective. If they complete the objective, the purpose of the next round is to see how fast the other team uh, team can do it. So if they can do it faster than the uh, team that did it the first time, it's not a tie. They win. If they do it slower than the other team, they mm. lose. So it's, you know how there there are a lot of games when they switch sides, it's like, oh, this side got one plant and this side got the other plant, so they're tie tied. Tie game. Aww. Yeah. No, it doesn't play like that. It plays like, no, fuck you, you took too long to do it, you lose. Good. I like that. Yeah, I think that's a lot smarter. Um but one of the things about the game is that the uh, the net code cannot keep up with how fast some of the players move. So goons broke the thing so fucking magnificently already. So people are running around, they realize that you run faster, even with the fastest character, you run faster with your uh, melee weapon out. And you could run so fast that unless you were walking, going directly towards somebody, they would not be able to hit you reliably because you were moving faster than the net code allowed. Whap, whap. So, uh, people were just, like, getting stabbed in this whirlwind of hate. <laughs> it was kind of great. It was kind of fun. People were getting a little bit angry about it at times, and other people were uh, just enjoying getting people angry about it. It was kind of funny to watch. Hmm. Uh, but I played a couple of games of that. It was uh, interesting. It's not... It's definitely not, here's a wonder weapon sort of thing like Brink is. Uh, you can definitely use most weapons in that game. It all feels pretty good. It It, it plays well. I'll probably go back to it if other people are playing it, because there were a few goons who were jumping around in Dirty Bomb. Uh, but I was uh, I tried to play Battlefield 4 this weekend a little bit, too. Mm. I haven't been able to go back to it. Yeah. Well, there was a big spring patch, and I wanted to play it when it came out a week and a half ago. Uh, but I've uh, Honestly, I'm kind of burnt out with the updates. I'm like, this is shit. I mean, granted, granted it was rushed out, released too early, but... I mean, this is shit that <laughs> should have been taken care of forever ago. Yeah, they really fucked some shit up in this update. Oh, so surprise! Let me, explain let me explain it. The mortar in the UCAV. Oh, they I've both read about have, that. Yeah, 60 second timers before you can use either of them. Each spawn. Not at the start <laughs> of the round. Each time you spawn, you have to wait 60 seconds to use your support items. So that kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, especially because, you know, sometimes it's like, hey, this guy's in a little bird and he's terrorizing us. Well, I'll send a UCAV after him in a minute. And you have to wait a literal minute for that. That's dumb. Yeah. I could I could understand waiting a minute from the from start of the round because I saw I saw a video of YouTube, on YouTube of somebody getting 17 kills with a UCAV. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's insane. You can you could definitely do damage with that damn thing. Yeah. Um, but they... They... Drop that. They made FLIR, FL, uh, RRV in tanks and LAVs and such a little less useful. Uh, everything that's like in the background is barely seeable, and then the people who are within range that are highlighted are very, very visible. So it's kind of an interesting change. I actually like it a little bit, but at the same time, it's like, ah, uh, it could be better. Yeah, I never um, used uh, FLIR very much because the bloom on it was just so big. It was. Yeah. I guess I could have, like, turned off the visual effects and all that, but, nah, fuck that. Yeah. Um, 
the really big change in terms of uh, here are the two really big changes I should mention. One, the Jets no longer have the three one three supremacy. Hmm. So it's not as simple as finding the right speed and turning. It's more simple. It's uh, get to the highest speed possible and turn. Oh, really? Because, yeah, the higher speed you are, the faster you turn. The idea is that the lower speed you are, the sharper the turn is going to be. So if you're behind somebody, just slam on the brakes and turn, and you'll be able to outturn them, but they're going to outpace you. So it's this whole thing. Um, I was able to make some people crash the other night doing that, but I wasn't able to get any kills with it because it's just too hard to get a, a beat on these guys flying. Which is, I think, fine by me. I think the dogfights are the least interesting part of that. And if oh yeah, you know, oh, you can yeah. make it dogfighting is fucking stupid. It's not just like the dogfighting being not interesting. It's that there are so many broken mechanics within it, like the lock-ons and everything like that. The the lock-ons for jets are just absolutely useless, and the fact that ECM still doesn't work perfectly is uh, really a problem. But yeah, there's. Lots of questions on some of that stuff. And, uh, of course, they fixed head glitching finally. And uh, it turns out that if you try to use a bipod, sometimes you'll end up just shooting into a wall because of the way the bipod works mm. uh, with uh, the head glitch and the leaning and everything. That's great. Uh, but the one that people have really been upset about is the s raw got a uh, major maneuverability nerf. Oh my god, my cat is sticking her face inside the dog's mouth. Mm. What the hell is wrong with this animal? Uh, so, yeah, the people can't use it as well to just dominate all air vehicles that ever existed, like uh, CQC could do. But he still was able to down a bunch of them this uh, jets this week with it. So, well, I mean, it's not as bad as nerf as they thought. He's I guess. he's kind of a savant with that thing. Mm. I mean, he started up his Daikatana LP. Yeah, I know it's fantastic. Oh, oh man. Oh, tell man, you. it is good. That is good, good uh, early 2000s video gaming, let me tell you. That's prime early 2000s video gaming. I had forgotten how bad graphics looked. Like, like at Oh, the, yeah. Like, if you go back and you play, like, Mega Man X on Super Nintendo, you're still like, oh, shit, this looks good. But if you go All back... All hand-drawn sprites and everything, yeah. Right, right. Because um, it, it was, like, the, the it was as high as that, that, that art form could go. Right. Um... But if you go back and you you look at like uh, any like Goldeneye or any of the early like Polygon games, oh yeah, they oh look man, like, they're you, bad. That it reminds me a lot of uh, some eight bit graphics where you kind of had to use your imagination to figure out what you were looking mm-hmm. at. In the Polygon era, there there was definitely things where it's like, what the fuck is that supposed to be? And you could like look at it all day and just like, I guess it's a gun. It's like, yeah, sure, it's a pistol. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thanks. It was like a fucking magic eye puzzle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that game definitely reminds me of that. Of course, when I recorded the episode I'm in, I was drunk as shit. Yeah, it was I could two tell. In the morning. I, I know. I know what drunk lazy fire sounds like. And on top of that, CQC didn't balance the audio correctly, so it sounds like I'm 30 seconds behind everything, which just adds to the idea that my reaction time was a little bit slow due to alcohol. Um, <laughs> oh, man, the bugs. The bugs are so loud. Yeah, the bugs. He turned down a lot of the, th- the sound effects. I like at the end of it how he, how he puts the like unedited audio so you can hear how loud the fucking bugs are. Oh, yeah, they were, <sighs> they were a fucking terror. Daikatana is a wonderful, wonderful blast from the past. John, I just Rome, like that John he, Romero made me his bitch. And you sucked it down? I sucked it down. Yes. I never actually played it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get the feeling that that's the case with a lot of people. They just, like, trashed the game uh, because they never touched it, and yet it lives up to the expectations of complete and utter trash. So I'm pretty good with it. Um, but yeah, I there are... Uh, the thing I wanted to talk about with the Battlefield patches is I mentioned this to the guys playing that like they should just fucking give up the ghost on this goddamned we're going to patch everything at once system. I goddamned hate that system. 
and it's mostly because when you look at it, saying I'm going to patch on the PS4 and the Xbox One and the PC at the same time just means giant fuck all patches every couple months. Like this was the spring patch. The last major patch was the winter patch, which was back in fucking December. Mm-hmm. And it's like, or no, sorry, it was like February. My mistake. So you know, you wait like three or four months for a patch, and you just like sit there and go like what the hell is this there's like all this broken shit the last patch introduced remember how long world series of darts went on the fucking underselling dart guns oh yeah uh, in oh god 3? that was so that, fucking good that oh. that was a, they said it was a simple ass fix they didn't roll anything out with it until the next dlc because they can patch it well on the xbox 360 dude, and the playstation 3 dude. you could patch it for free so that's what they oh, waited my for god Oh, it was so great. Oh, it was so great. I got That's... over 3,000 kills inside eight hours with that thing. Eight yeah, hours of game was... time, 3,000 kills. <laughs> that was such a ridiculous <laughs> fucking thing. Oh, God. Oh, man. So, yeah, uh, if you're listening to this and you haven't heard us talk about it, because I think I mention it whenever I talk about broken game patches. Oh, but it was so good. <laughs> the Battlefield used to be so good at making, like, fun, broken shit. Like, the no-drop aug, stare aug, uh, yeah. smoke oh, grenade. God. It was a rail gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they said, uh, CQC said they actually buff flashes really, really hard. Yeah, so he's and been flashing now- the team. His, his, his team. Yes, he does that. He flashes everything that moves. You get three flashes. They replenish pretty quickly from ammo packs. And they flash a huge-ass area and make you completely fucking blind. He was telling me that he actually flashed a guy and then just ran up to him and stabbed him. Because you don't get the button prompts if, you, if you're getting stabbed and you've been flashed. They don't even appear. Oh, wow. So you just get stabbed. It's kind of great. I like the idea. Huh. Um... But yeah, the, uh, I don't know, the patch, like, with the darts thing, I should explain that first before I continue on. There was a point where DICE decided to balance some things, and one of the things you could have in that game was an underslung uh, gun that shot darts, like a shotgun shell that shot darts. Yeah, flechettes. Yeah, on the shotguns. Flechettes, yes. So, it turned out that, for whatever reason, the patch they had released had broken this thing so insanely that it was impossible not to notice because each one of the flechettes that was fired and we're talking about like 13 or 14 of these things per uh, underslung (laughs) shot each one of them was count for as much damage as the rifle it was attached to Mm. and only if it was attached to the rifle only if it was underslung at the time so you did have to have an underslung rail but you could also like these things traveled really well and you could get like sights for your gun that would work with the underslung and you could snipe with this thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, you could reliably you get like it would take maybe 3 shots but at like 200 meters you could kill somebody probably usually 3 or 4 shots. Yeah. But up close it was basically a death cannon. Yep. <laughs> like within Within, a, I would say, almost 50 meters, it was, like, assured to kill somebody if it hit anything. And the, the FAL was the uh, was the gun of choice because it had the highest minimum damage, uh, which I think right. was, like, 28 at range. So, yeah, so you only we had were... to connect with four darts. Yep. And uh, so it was just... You would just see entire teams using assault class with these dart, the underslung darts, and you just knew you were in for a world of hurt. Oh, god damn, that was uh, But we... I had a video where I actually recorded us in this, like, we're like, let's do a comeback, guys, and so we all went darts and just dominated a game of Metro, and I, that was, like, one of those Battlefield moments, you're just, yeah, of course this happened, uh, but like, they've given up on fun glitches, and they've just gone into, like, let's make this game unfun, uh, it, but the the big thing with Battlefield 4, I feel like, we have to acknowledge that the PS4 and the Xbox One have really shitty patching processes and have had patching bad patching processes since the Xbox 360 PlayStation 3 days yep. because they have to go through a certification to get put on Xbox Live or a PS network, PSN whereas on the PC you just go in and say, I want to patch my game here is the patch, okay, and you upload it and people download the thing and it works. So if I have you know, if you have an issue with like the attack, uh, the attack jet does way less damage than it's supposed to. It was a it was a change that wasn't supposed to make it into the patch, but somehow escaped QA. 
and uh, so they are not going to fix this probably f until the next major patch which is probably not going to come out until their night map and new map DLC sometime in the next couple months and it's like you know guys I can understand why they're packaging a lot of information together it makes sense to an extent if you're going to have Microsoft and Sony both QA this thing you may as well just put as much information in front of them as possible but they've proven that with the uh, the community test environment the CTE that they can simply patch shit and like fix it and do updates every week if they wanted to on the PC what stops them from doing this at the retail level like why can't we, you know the PC just have patches that are PC patches and if the consoles want them they'll come later in a bigger patch version like I, I someone needs to provide a rational explanation for why that can't just happen uh reasons yeah I, one of the things one of the DICE developers said was that they wouldn't do that simply because it would mean that they had multiple versions of the code out there in the game and so they wouldn't know which version was having issues but I mean these are the same people who listen to reddit for ideas on how to make things better in their game and keep fucking it up because they're listening to reddit so you know right there but yeah that, that was kind of the thing that irked me this week in terms of uh, stuff besides the Microsoft going to the PC gamer press conference that's so that is so weird they're just going to get up there and here's going to be the conversation you guys should get ready we're going to bring the connect to the PC it's like fantastic no one wanted it yeah it's like I mean, what else it, it, the P, all right, PC gaming is fundamentally different from console gaming and in one, uh, this is one of the places that, that that it's really different. Console out in the living room. You're sitting on a couch. It's it's great. It's nice. I mean, you're playing on your big ass TV. It's cool. PC. I'm playing on a 27 inch monitor that I sit like three feet away from. So how the fuck would connect make sense for me? Yeah. You know what? The, uh, so I'm gonna have to stand. How far away from my 27-inch monitor am I going to have to get like a fucking 60-inch monitor that's completely completely useless for any like a uh, school or work applications? Yeah, uh, that's a good question on how they. If now, reminder: this is my guess. This is not like I didn't get some sort of uh, advance notice on what's going to happen. Um, but you know, it'd be nice if you could take a look at it. And, you know, maybe instead of saying what Microsoft has said so far is that, listen, we're not looking at Xbox as just a console. We look at it as a brand. And, you know, this is the Microsoft game brand. This is why Windows 10's personal assistant is named Cortana. Uh, this is why they almost... Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. Like, you, I know. you just almost made me go and cancel my Windows 10, like... It, it it popped up I think for Windows seven and eight users, yeah. Uh, that you can get a free upgrade to Windows ten, which makes no sense to me. But okay, yeah, sure, whatever. It's going to be their Microsoft is going to release their last OS, and it's going to be Windows ten according to Microsoft. Their last OS. Yeah, they're just going to update this thing in the future. I'm yeah yeah I'm sure. Yeah, uh, but yeah, who knows? We'll see how it goes. But uh. Yeah, the it's going to be called Cortana. There was a time where they were going to call their Internet Explorer uh, substitute Spartan. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just they took that Halo thing and they just fucking ran with it. <laughs> it's like that's what we got. It's what we got. Stop. It's what we got. God damn it! This is all I have. When we divorced Bungie. This is all they left us was a bunch of names and buzzwords. This is what you get now. They they decided to call it Microsoft Edge, and they said it was because it was it was so advanced. It <laughs> Does was on that the mean edge. like you're going to constantly be on the edge and never get there? Yeah, that's every site you try to go to with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just gets like ninety nine percent there, and you're just like, oh come on! God damn it, Microsoft Edge! This is the weirdest gimmick I've ever then, fucking seen. And then there's going to be a uh, an add on that uh, called uh, Microsoft Blue Balls. <laughs> That's their porn thing. Yeah. 
<laughs> it always buffers. It, it, it and it, no, buffers. no, no, no. It, it goes until until the money shot, and it just stops. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, um, yep. Uh, yeah. Feel bad now. Yep. 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 You're That's, welcome. That was a You're welcome. It's a feature. You're welcome, everyone. Yeah. It's a, it's a major feature in Windows 10. <laughs> uh, but I'm I'm actually probably gonna go ahead right away and just go ahead and get Windows 10. Uh, because it is going to bring back things like the start bar, which I've not really missed, so so to speak. But it's you know any it's interaction an I can get the like I never understood the fucking crybabying. Like oh I want my start bar. Okay, it's an adjustment. It's a change. It was an unnecessary change. It was it kind of dumb. Yeah, the end of the world. Nope. And yeah. Windows 8 did a ton of shit. Way better behind the scenes. Like uh, oh, yeah. when, especially when it comes to memory and. Or memory utilization, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. a little drunk to get into the fucking details, but no, no, you're right. It does a lot of really good things in terms of uh, being a browser and the backwards compatibility to other Windows platforms that was kind of lacking in Windows Seven and even Windows Vista to, Vista. Uh, to a degree. <laughs> uh, Vista, but at the same time, when I when I get on a Windows Seven PC, I have I work on a Windows Seven PC at work and then I come home to my Windows 8, there's still enough differences in the layout sometimes where I forget which one I'm on, and I'll start, like, clicking a button going, why the fuck is it popping up a Metro screen? What the fuck is this oh, shit? Metro, Metro, like, Metro's fucking dumb. I mean, I get what they're doing with it for touchscreen and all that, but <laughs> I, I, don't li- I, I, I don't like it. And I, I, you, can, you can boot to the normal screen. I do. You can fucking do that, and that's what that's I what do. That's what I have. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I just don't. The people who complain about it, I find uh, they're they're just set in their ways. This was how Windows was since Windows 3.1. That's all I want. Yep. You know, I've just, had this since 1991. I want it back. Give it back. Yeah, basically. Oh, and I was wrong. It's not the last um, OS. It's the last Windows. So, get ready. You know what that care. means. You I, know what that means. It's gonna be Xbox. Yeah. No. Microsoft's new OS, Halos. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just a series of programs in circles, uh, and they're related to each stop other. Stop it! See. Stop it! Stop you it! You can completely control it with a controller. You just hold one stick one way, the other stick the other way. You I pick hate the you. program like, you I, want. I use. honestly, I think I hate you as a person. But you know, it's the next thing. It, I, I know it will be. Yeah. Yeah. It's like this game series hasn't been relevant since 2006. Get ready. You're going to hear more about it every year. Of course, uh the Halo Master Chief collection reminding us of uh stupid shit that people will buy because that game is still not fixed. Yep. Uh almost 200 days yeah, into its I release. had a uh, I had a friend on my Facebook feed who uh, got an Xbox 1 and then they they wrote underneath hashtag Halo Master Chief CH uh, e i f I forget which. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm just like. Yep. Yeah, it's broke. Yep. Everything's broke. Uh, but yeah, hopefully the uh, people figure things out soon with that. But, eh, I at the end of the day, whatever. It's. It is what it is. It's it's going to be broken uh, because they had five different studios working on it or something like that, and they had to assemble all the code together. God. Yeah. Whatever. So. Whatever. I I. I don't know. Hey, hey, Halo's another Counter Strike type game to me. It's a game that I really enjoyed, and now I really don't. Like, I played Halo 4 for all of, like, a week, and I'm like, uh, like, it's, I don't know, it's I, not fun. It's just not fun. Yeah, I actually beat the single player of Halo 4 so did in, I. like, I, I always, maybe I always a play, day and a half. I, I always play the single players of the Halos. I, I, it's campy, I, I like the story, whatever. And it, it, I think it's getting kind of creepy with the Master Chief Cortana thing, but <laughs> but you know whatever. 
Uh, I mean, I'm basically playing it because 15 year old me played it now, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's where a lot of people are with it. Um, but what's going to be interesting is just to see how uh, Microsoft really. Because Microsoft has made, and people have pointed out, Microsoft has made a lot of commitments to the PC platform in the past that have just gone nowhere. Games for Windows Live and shit like that has just like been an absolute fucking clusterfuck. It's been nothing but bad press for them because it didn't really work well. It didn't. It was supposed to be like their onboard DRM more than anything else, and people were just like, uh, "This kind of sucks." And uh, the games that use it have major issues, and like the way you updated it was. It was like the old way of updating games, like when you'd have to go and download a patch specifically for the game, instead of it like saying, hey, there's a patch available or anything like that, you'd have to go find the patch, someone would have to tell you about the fucking patch, and you download it, and the best part of it is that you would download it, and then it would tell you, ooh, you don't have the latest version, you better download the patch, and you look at the version of the patch that you downloaded, and the one they're telling you to download, it's the same fucking thing, Mm -hmm. and it's like... How do you fuck that up on a fundamental level? You are a software company. How do you fuck up software as a software company? Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, really interesting stories about how Microsoft has fucked a ton of shit up. Yeah. So, Like their Surface tablet deal with well, the NFL? Yeah, there's that. There's just Where the... everyone called them iPods for the first few months. And <laughs> their major Microsoft people were very, very upset about that, apparently. Why the fuck? Who, who? I don't even know anybody who uses a fucking Surface. My mother-in-law does. Really? Yeah, it was a work thing. Now she has an iPod or iPad at home because she I mean, liked the don't, Surface don't, so much at work. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I... So here's here's what happened though. I like I love this. She had to use the Surface for work, and then get she's an like, iPad. I really like a tablet. So she went and got an iPad. Like <laughs> she recognized immediately like there is a better product on the market. Mm-hmm. Or at least a more popular one. But, I mean, you know. I, I have an i I have an uh, iPad two, and Ooh. I mean it's fancy man. Yeah, no, I mean it's like the thing is, yeah, I you know I built my I built my computer, I did all that all that shit. But when it like the thing I like about Apple is it's all fucking stupid. Like it is yeah. idiot fucking proof. You yeah. can just. Whatever. <laughs> hey, it works. It works all the time, and yeah. it's great. And, and and that's nice. When it comes to my phone or shit like that, I don't want I don't want to have any fucking questions of, of what I've done to fuck it up. I just yeah. want something that's simple. Maybe a generation behind. I don't care. It's nice and it's shiny and it works. Yeah. Uh, can I before we close out because we're getting close to that time? I just want to say the dumbest fucking product I've seen people lose their minds over in the last few years has got to be the fucking Apple, Apple Watch. Yep, boom. Yep. Ah. Yep. That fucking thing is the dumbest piece of shit I have ever seen in my Dude. goddamn life. I heard it him is... talking about it on NPR, and I'm like, what the fuck? You really heard... can't reach in your fucking pocket? I love that the person I was listening to was the, uh, the person from Recode, because we get uh, a show up here that partnered with Recode before and after they were bought by another company recently. Uh, and it was it was a tech blog that was a pretty... It was, it's a pretty good tech blog overall. But the person they had on, talking about the uh, Apple Watch, they got to spend a week with it. There was a guy who followed her to the bathroom in a restaurant so he could ask her about the Apple Watch and if that was one when he saw her wearing it. And it's just like, you were clearly... People are clearly buying this thing and liking this thing simply because of the hype and the fact that it has a fucking Apple logo on it. Yeah. Like there is no there is no good reason to own this product. The reason uh you know smartphones took off was because they combined several devices into one. Even if they were kind of simplistic, yeah. you know, your PDAs and your your cell phone mm-hmm. and your BlackBerry and all these other things that you were carrying around to do certain, you know, MP3 to, MP3 player, camera, yeah. cell phone, uh BlackBerry, uh PDA, uh dude, compass. Yeah. I don't even uh, need a fucking GPS. compass. GPS, yeah, uh, like you know, it can substitute for a flat, a shitty flashlight if you needed to. Mm-hmm. It, like, there's a lot of utility in one of these things. The Apple Watch, what the fuck?
fuck is you using that for? I don't, like, someone was talking about it, and it's like, yeah, you get notifications, you get an email, you can't read it on the Apple Watch, you just get a notification. If you get a text, oh, you man. can see some of the text, but it's small. It's almost, the, it's almost like, I wish my phone vibrated whenever I got an email, so I knew I that I would have to check it to see if I had I, an email. I wish I could buy an extra accessory to my phone that I could wear on my wrist. And that'll use the battery that would, life, like, four times faster. Yep, I, I hope I can buy one of those devices someday that will definitely improve my life in some way or another. Holy shit. Uh, my mother-in-law was talking about how one of her, uh, the, the school she teaches at gets a lot of, uh, they seek out Chinese exchange students. And uh, they got one in, and he came in with an Apple Watch and was, like, taking pictures of, like, stuff he was doing in class. And all the kids were like, are you taking pictures with your watch? And, like... Oh, well, of course, you're fucking... You guys are all, like, very easily impressed by technology. If I saw someone doing that, I would think they were a goddamn idiot. Like, your quality's not going to be good, friend. It's just not going to happen on that little tiny watch screen. So good luck. Have fun taking pictures of your goddamn cake or whatever the fuck on an Apple Watch. I don't care. Dude, the, but, the, the one thing I think that makes <sighs> makes sense as far as that, that short, sort of shit is uh, Google Glass. Yeah, that's something I could actually see being a thing and being useful, because if they can get it to the point where it's a 3D heads-up display, like you, like you twitch your eye, it takes a picture or whatever. <laughs> I mean that 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 could be the the actual sort of revolutionary, like yeah, type, that's type that's thing. Star Trek level shit, right? And that's, it's coming. The Apple it's Watch. gonna come. The Apple Watch is like one of those pieces of technology that is clearly it's like the a power company glove, saying, dude. It, "It's no, it's clearly a company saying, hey, people have been saying we should do this for years, so we did it.'" And it's like, fantastic! I am very proud of you for doing this thing that the investors wanted you to do for so long. I don't understand did why. You, did you see they have a ten thousand dollar one that's gold? Yeah, dude. But you can, they, and companies have actually popped up. They're like, oh hey, we'll we'll uh, we'll gold plate your Apple Watch for four hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> now, granted, it's twenty four karat gold, so it's gonna rub off immediately. But oh, yeah, but uh, it, it'll be fun. You'll get to see all the iron and everything. Dude, um, but it's so dumb, so fucking it's, dumb, dude. It's just it's the dumbest white person technology I've ever seen. In my I mean, life. don't get me wrong. I can appreciate like good brands, that sort of thing. Like when it comes to clothing, yes. You know what? You find somebody who makes something that's better than everybody else. More power to you. But to be like an Apple fanboy and just to get something just because, get fucked. Yeah. Just get fucked. Yeah. And I like it's, Apple. I like the Apple. Most of the Apple products. But it, get fucked. <laughs> it it's seriously like you're paying. You're if you own one of those things, you're most likely paying for it from a trust fund. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's, there is no person in the world who is going to look at this thing at the end of the day and go, ah, yes, there's a lot of utility in this. Let me explain to you the times this has been useful. Mm. I can tell you the number of times my cell phone or my smartphone even has been useful. You know, if I'm in a city I don't know that well and I want to find a place to eat, I can do that with my smartphone in seconds instead of, like, guessing or planning ahead. Perfect. Great. I, if I want to email somebody while I'm out on the road, perfect. I, I just want to go but to 20 years the in the fuck? future, and I want Google nanobots in my bloodstream that I can just be like, oh, hey, I'm hungry, and it'll be like, oh, hey, we can go this way. And I'll say, thank <laughs> you, Google. Well, if you believe Sony, their PlayStation 9 or 7 was going to be basically spores that you sucked into your brain and modified your, mod your neural networks. So, you know, give a few years to Sony. They'll obviously figure this out. <laughs> Your brain will slow down immensely. It'll carry less capacity. Like, oh, <laughs> you'll be able to go to a lot of places. Play Uncharted 48. That'd be great. Uh, fucking <laughs> It'll Apple just Watch. be called I... Charted then. <laughs> We've already seen all the places. We're just revisiting all the worlds from the first levels. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I I'm just... The Apple Watch is the dumbest piece of technology I've seen in years, and the people who go out and fucking procure this thing. And I'm sure I'm telling you, there's going to be... It is, um, it is there's gonna be Power Glove levels of stupid. Yeah. At least I the Power wear... Glove fucking looked rad, though. I... 
I would you'd strain to call that rad. Oh, come on. That's like the yeah. pinnacle of like 80s cool, man. Yeah, Weird Al Yankovic wearing a a power glove and dark polar uh, dark uh, Ray-Bans is the pinnacle of 80s cool. Oh my, my god. Mind. That's that's it if you can find it's that done. picture. It's done. Yeah. Go home, that, Tom that Cruise. Picture. You ain't got shit on this. <laughs> oh god. All right. So Arnold, any final thoughts this week? Oh. We're running out of time here. Oh, fuck the Apple Watch. Fuck that thing. Roll Tide. Born ready. <laughs>